Hi everyone, Roy here. Thank you so much for watching. This video may be longer than my normal videos, but I ask that you continue to watch until the very end. My heart is heavy with the current shape of our country and what's happened in the last couple weeks. The murder of George, George Floyd was horrific and completely unacceptable. I pray that our justice system does what's appropriate in this case. And my condolences go out to Mr. Floyd's family and his friends. I am very much pro-police. I grew up with police in my life, on, on a good note, of course. Um, I think for the majority, most police are out for the good. They want to help people. They want to keep the country, city, the state. They want to keep it in good running order. Not all police are bad. But we do have bad apples that we need to address. As a person with a disability, I do have concerns. With cerebral palsy, especially when we're tired, speech is affected. Speech can slur or be delayed. And I often wonder sometimes if I call the police for help and they hear my speech slur, are they going to think I'm drunk, high, or a mental case? And are they going to put that on a run or a, a call for service, if you will? And when they, when they get to wherever I'm at, how are they going to react? Second, I use public transportation or rideshare services like Uber, Lyft, or even a cab. And I often wonder if we get pulled over, especially, Lord forbid, the driver I'm with has a warrant for whatever reason, when the police officers approach, they're going to ask me to get out of the car. Obviously, when you look at me, you'll see I have a disability. But if I tell them I can't get out of the car and I need a wheelchair or I need assistance, if they're high strung or they've had a bad day, or they just got off of a uh, call that's still got their heart pumping. Are they going to realize that? Or are they going to think that I'm not telling the truth and rip me out of the car? And then, when they try to put my hands behind my back, my hands don't go all the way back behind my back. They can't because of cerebral palsy. Are they going to think I'm resisting arrest? And are they going to end up hurting me because of their lack of training of individuals with a disability? These are things that I shouldn't have to worry about. And I never worried about when I was younger. But because of the shape that our country is in right now and the lack of training from our on our police officers, it is something I worry about every day, every day. And again, I shouldn't have to worry about that. I can't help but to be concerned for our individuals who are nonverbal or on the spectrum of autism. Sometimes these individuals do not respond to commands in the way that you would think. But do our police officers have enough training and enough discipline to handle situations like this? Or are they going to overreact and injure them or potentially kill them because of their lack of training and knowledge? If it's not being done already, I believe all officers and first responders should undergo routine mental health evaluations to ensure they are mentally stable enough to do the duties they were assigned. And if not, they should be removed from the line of duty and undergo treatment 
until they are able to return to work. To our police officers and first responders who are doing what they're supposed to do and following the law, thank you so much. Your work is appreciated. To Chief Tom Quinlan with the Columbus Division of Police, if you see this video, I would love an opportunity to speak with you about how we can make things safer for individuals with disabilities. Thank you for the work that you have done with the division and my contact information is at the end of this video. Thanks everyone for taking the time to watch this video. Please remember to click the subscribe and notification bell just below the video to be alerted next time I upload new content. In the meantime, stay safe, take care, and God bless.